Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. Yay! Woo! I'm just going to give everybody some time to join us. We are on an hour earlier. We're changing our time back at this Sunday. Um, we started Bible study at 845. The service is going to start at 10. And we're doing that as preparation for our new move that the pastor will speak about um, shortly. So we're just trying to give everybody an opportunity to join us. Anybody want? <laughs> as, we are, as we're waiting for everyone to join, um, this morning our Sunday school um, lesson, as I mentioned to you before, started at 8.45 a.m. And it was taught by Sister Rosalind Walker from the Fellowship Baptist Church. And today's lesson was God's promises to hear and forgive. And our lessons came from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 to 22. The devotional reading was from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 to 10. And the background scripture was the same, 2 Chronicles verses 7, chapter 7, verses 1 through 22. When you get an opportunity... Please go back and look at our Facebook class from this morning. And the class will also be uploaded on YouTube where you can get the opportunity to look, um, look at the lesson. And if you have any questions or comments, please share them with us so we can respond to them. I'm still trying to give people an opportunity to come on board because I know we started an hour earlier. Amen. You know, actually let people come in. Yeah. They can look at it later. Mm -hmm. Next week's lesson is called God Promises to Restore. The devotional reading is going to come from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and verses 13 to 17. The background scripture, as well as the lesson, is going to come from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 21. Um, the lesson itself really is going to be Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 4 and 10 to 12. But read everything so you can get a, um, some background scripture as far as what's taking place. And again, study ahead of us so you can have opportunity to ask questions, whether it may be by Facebook or Zoom. All the information for our Zoom and Facebook um, classes are on our page. So you can link into those services as well. All right, let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to see another year, Lord. An opportunity to see another day, an opportunity to get it right again or to do better when we messed up, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Father, for just saving us and keeping us throughout last year and we ask you, Lord, to continue to do so this year, Lord, Father God. We ask you, Lord, that you will watch over all those who are suffering because they lost a loved one in 2022, Father God. We ask you, Lord, that you touch those who lost a job, kids, husbands, wives, um, their finances messed up, Lord. Father God, we just ask you, Lord, that you would touch and heal them and give them peace and comfort, Father God, that you would get, restore their joy back to them, Lord. That you will just give them those comfort, Father, Lord, in those night hours, Lord, when they're missing their loved ones, Father God. Father God, we ask you, Father, for a healing touch, Father God, for those who are sick, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Father, that you will continue to watch over us, Lord. Keep us, Father God, as only you can. We ask you, Father, for continue to deliver us, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for your salvation, for redeeming us to you, Father God. But sometimes, Father God, we go through storms as well, Father God. We ask you, Father, for to maintain your delivering power, that you will continue to provide intercessory <clears throat> prayers for us, Lord, that you continue to work on us, Father God, to make us more like what you want us to be, Father God, that you would teach us to love our neighbors, Father God, as we love ourselves, Father God. But more importantly, Lord, teach us to love ourselves and, and teach us to love you, Father God, because if we love you, everything else will fall in place. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your many blessings, Father God. We thank you, Father, for your keeping power, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do in this upcoming year, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Father, for the, the new sanctuary that you've given us, Lord. 
Father God, we just thank you, Father, for all that you're doing, Lord. And we just want to trust you, Father God, to make us bold warriors for you, Lord. And we, Lord, we just present everybody under the sound of my voice, Father God. You know what their needs are. You know what they stand in need of prayer, Father God. We ask you, Father, that you would intervene on their behalf, Lord. And we thank you, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Um, just a few reminders. January the 28th will be our outreach ministry where we will be at Fed and French Streets as we do every month to provide things for the homeless. And hopefully this year, this month, we'll give a word as well. Um, we give out a little tracks. So we pray for those who need prayer. But, you know, we want to be more of a positive influence to them, not just to give them, but also to encourage them to seek the Lord while he's able to be found. Mm -hmm. We continue to ask for donations to provide to them. Um, as we mentioned to you in the past, we provide clothing, we provide food, as well as toiletries and, you know, blankets, stuff to get them through um, through the winter through the years, through the summer, because we do this all year round. So pray for us. If you can contribute and help us, we appreciate that. Um, if you can come down and assist us, we'll also appreciate it, appreciate that as well. We always meet um, on front and third at 8 a.m. the fourth Saturday of the month. So we solicit your prayers as well. Our song just is again under the weather. So please keep her in prayer that the Lord would heal her body, that she was, he would also strengthen her voice and be ready for us for next week. You know, um, it's a lot of things going around. There's, we know about COVID. We know about the flu. We know about the respiratory viruses that's going around. Please take some time to take care of yourself. When you go in large crowds, wear your mask. I know people shun others who wear the mask, but you know what? It's for your protection because there's so many germs going around. And please make sure you're washing your hands frequently, okay? Um, because you don't know what's <clears throat> been touched or what germs you may have picked up in the process. So please take care of yourselves. This morning, the pastor is going to be coming from Revelations chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. And we ask the Lord that he will bring forth this word with anointing. We ask him, the Lord to touch our pastor so he can speak with us, says the Lord, and continue to keep him in good physical health so that we don't catch these colds that the kids have. Um, Revelations chapter 3, verses 7 to 13. Where I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things said he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogues of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my commands to preserve. Also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those. Amen. Let me go back and read that. Because you have kept my command to preserve, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell in the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which shall come down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The title of the sermon today is Unlimited Possibilities. Uh, 
I present to you now Pastor Michael Alfonso Echo Senior with the word of God. Amen. 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 This morning we are so excited that you stopped by. Some of you won't see this um, until an hour later because you may have signed on 11 o'clock looking for us. But we did move the service up an hour to accommodate our new services. Can you say with me, Horizon Cinemas? Horizon, Horizon Cinemas. Cinemas. You have to say the rest of this. But <coughs> Beltway Plaza, all right, 7660 Bel Air Road, Theater 7. Thus far, we're going to be in Theater 7 starting next week. So those of you are looking for, you want to just come together, we're coming together. they next week. We'll be there for our Sunday school, which starts at 845. So we'll be there on site for Sunday school if you want to come. And, on, and in service, we also will maintain our social media platform. But thanks be to God, we now have a home. Amen. 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 A home to go to that we can come together as a body and fellowship. So starting on next Sunday, meet us and beat us there. Amen. 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 And don't let me get down there and just me, the four of us, we'll come back to the house. <laughs> and have service. So those who've been asking me for when we're gonna get a building, God has opened the way, He's opened the door this uh today uh for us. We want to use that door effectively. Amen. 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 We want to use that door effectively and go in that door and also use this door as an opportunity to uh speak what's gonna to happen to us throughout this year. Amen. 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 Using this door, I'm saying door, this door that God <laughs> literally opened the door for us. Amen. A Made a way where it was seemed to be no way and Amen. set us up really nice. We want to take this opportunity to use the doors he opens for us for ministry. Amen. 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 Um, we um, know about what uh, COVID has done. It's changed the way we do church. It's changed the way we teach lessons. It's changed the way we meet. It's changed the attendance of churches. Do we understand all that? And we got that. We'll have masks and um, uh, sanitize, all this stuff there in space. We got plenty of space. So come on out, bring your family, and let's uh, do ministry. Step out on this year differently than what we've done before. Amen. Amen. Um, this morning, the scripture has been read before you. My focal verse will be verse 8, although I would love for you to read this entire chapter, Revelation um, chapter 3, 7 and 13, if you get opportunity, as I've been doing, going through, starting at verse chapter chapter 1, verse 1, and reading to this point to get the whole picture of what's going on, the feel of the text. It's always important to have uh, context as we read the Word of God. Um this morning, unlimited possibilities. How many are ready for that? Amen. Amen. Unlimited possibilities. Amen. Let's say it together. This is the year. This, this is the year. Of unlimited, of unlimited possibilities. possibilities. Give God a praise. Yes, Lord. Let's say, let's say it with me. This is my year. This is my year. Of unlimited, of unlimited possibilities. 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 Y'all believe that? Yes. So, if I open the door, it's one thing. But if God says, I set before you an open door, it takes it to a whole nother level. Yes. Yes. Uh, Father, as we come today to impart some of the truths you share with me, some of the vision you share with me, please help us to run with the vision, oh God. Please help us, oh God, to be a Philadelphia church. Yes, sir. But we yes. thank you right now, God. This is our family. This is what we want to be. A Philadelphia church. We thank you right now. So help us to glean from the words you left to us. Be faithful to those words and serve you with all our hearts and souls. Ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're dealing with verse 8 in particular, but I want to um, give you something I usually don't give. <laughs> um, it's some, um, some pinpoints, some some things you can hang your head on today. Some just some notes, just some highlights of what we're going to deal with. Um, because if we're going to be Philadelphia, means brotherly love. Amen. Amen. Uh, so if we're going to be a Philadelphia church, 
we have to be take on some of those characteristics. This church, where the door was open for them, was faithful in their dependence, number one, faithful to the word and faithful to Christ. So what's the key word? Faithful. Faithfulness. Well done, my good, and what? Faithful, Faithful servant. servant. Yeah. And the test of faithfulness, I believe, is what you do with what you got. Amen, somebody. Amen. What you do with what you have. Uh, if you have something that's small, you're supposed to treat it as important if it was big. Mm-hmm. Because the Bible's like this, God, Jesus says this, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. If you find a person that can't handle $10, they're not going to handle $100. And that same person can't handle $100, won't be able to handle $1,000. And it goes on and on. So what God is looking for is a faithful people. Amen. Amen. And I, if I could just take this, I don't know where this is going all, I have some things that we're going to, I got to flow with this right now, where I'm going with this. We are not going to be a people who's faithful to a pastor. Yeah. Amen. Oh, y'all, come on now, somebody. I wish I had people in the house right now Amen. who would follow me. Amen. Amen. We are not going to be faithful to a church. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. We're not going to be faithful to an organization of the church. Our faithfulness is unto God. Oh, Amen. Amen. oh I wish I had somebody pray with me right now. Amen. Our yeah. faithfulness is going to be unto God. As you look in the book of Revelation, you'll discover that there's a lot. People are, people are uh, uh, often afraid to come to this book. But this book is full of treasures. And in the very beginning, it's a promise to those who hear it, you're going to get a blessing. So I'm here to tell you right now, on God's word, when you hear this word, you're going to get a blessing. Amen. 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 It says at the very beginning, describes Christ in such a wonderful way as the one who's walking in the midst of the candlesticks. And these candlesticks represents the church. And in it, churches, seven churches, seven candlesticks. And in his right hand, he has seven stars, which are the seven angels to the seven churches. We believe, most scholars believe these angels, angels are something to be messenger, that will be the leaders of the church. All right? He's writing this message. And he begins to <coughs> speak to these churches, and all but two churches he condemns for different behaviors. The one we're looking at today, Philadelphia, is one he didn't condemn. There was no condemnation there. This is the faithful church. So if we wouldn't, mow all churches, every church there had a problem. Except two churches. All churches have issues going on. Amen. Amen. But our aim ought to be is aim high. Amen. And our desire is to be faithful to what God's called us to be. This particular church, as the Lord inspects his church, he walks in the midst. He tells some churches that if you don't turn around, you got to read it. He said, like, if you don't turn around, he said, I'm going to fight against you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And, and, and at the, the last reading, this is church number six. And if, the, if, it, if it be true, and I know I'm going, I'm giving you some things. I want you to get, get some firm footing before we go into the message. If this be true, that, uh, that, that, that the, the churches represent different church ages. All right? So we, we will be uh, somewhere between Philadelphia and Laodicea. Mm. <laughs> Those who don't belong to Philadelphia belong to Laodicea. Mm. Amen, because Amen. Laodicea is known as a lukewarm church. Mm-hmm. All right? But Philadelphia is known as the faithful church. So I believe that we ought to all be aiming to be the faithful church. Amen. Amen. Not faithful to man, but faithful to God. Amen. There's a lot of people who have allegiances. Now, look, I see it all the time. I look at it, it kind of it, it kind of disturbs me because we have become groupies and not worshipers. Mm. Yeah. All right, now what am I mean? I mean, I mean, we become groupies. We center ourselves around a personality, and that personality's lifestyle, uh, attitude, leadership skills are never left to challenge. Be challenged. But whatever that personality says, we just believe because, after all, the Bible says, "Don't touch the mind anointed." But you got to understand this: you got everybody is subject to somebody. 
And nobody should fly around and not be accountable to anybody. Everybody ought to have some checks and balances. So you know what Pastor Apples was praying for? Some strong leaders. Amen. 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 Praying for some strong leaders that would check him when he needs to be checked. Amen. 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 I got one here now looking at me. She, <laughs> she definitely will check me if I need to be checked. They got two other ones here. They will check me if I need to be checked. But check me. You know why? Not that we're trying to pull someone down. We're trying to lift each other up. Amen. Amen. Because what the Lord does in this particular letter, he begins to actually commend this church for what they were doing. He first gives, tells us the destination will be Philadelphia, the church of Philadelphia. We know the church of Philadelphia, just, just, just for some uh, facts about this church, it was situated in a strategic place on a main route of an imperial, imperial post from Rome uh, to the east. And thus was called the gateway of the east. Very important town. People travel through to do business. Uh, Philadelphia, as I said before, means brotherly love. It was lo it's located in the Asia Minor. It sat up on a hill and felt like it was really secure. But it had a problem in that city. It had earthquakes. And an earthquake actually destroyed that, that church in that town. People started living, because so many earthquakes came, people started living outside of the city. It was famous for wine, and it was a pagan and very dark uh, situation where the church was, where the church stayed faithful. How I many of us still in a very dark situation? Yeah. A pagan situation, but the church can still shine as a light. And for him to say to this church that uh, I'm going to make you a pillar in the house of God, they understood what that was. Because men were building pillars at the time for people who had done great things, but when the earthquake came, it took it down. But God says, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, build your pillar, I'm going to make you a pillar. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. 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 So God is about making us, making us what he wants us to be. So um, in verse 8, I said to you earlier, he says to them, he commends this church. He commends this church. He says, I know your works. How many know God knows us? Yes, he yes, says, I know your works. I know what you're doing. And I noticed that through all the churches, God keeps saying, I know your works, whether they're good or bad, which lets me know that maybe you haven't thought about this. But I want you to remember, I want you to think about this. Jesus is watching. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I had this shirt, this t-shirt I wore the other day, has a um, a picture of like uh, a person that's supposed to be like Jesus, peeking out saying, I saw that. And people get a a tickle out of that because they, you know they understand me. It reminds them that no matter what you do, he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I want us to get beyond this this superficial uh, religiosity, mm -hmm. where um, we know, and I see it done so often across uh, Christian circles. We know something is wrong. We know we're about to say something wrong. We know we're about to do something wrong. So we look around the room for somebody who will believe walking right, and we'll say to them, excuse me, and then we'll say we got to say. Mm. Which tells me a whole lot. <clears throat> it tells me that what you're about to say, you've already thought it through. You know it's wrong, but you decide that you're going to say it anyway. Mm -hmm. now, how long it takes? Seconds. Bam, bam, bam. Y'all know how we think. Mm -hmm. Also tells me this. It tells me that we have a greater respect for people than we do God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And God showed me this about myself a long time ago, so this is not a new truth in my life. God let me know that, Michael, you say you're weak. But the right person walks in the room while you're doing something weak, you'll straighten up. Amen. Amen. If you're doing something, you say, I can't help but do it, and you wait till everybody leave. If somebody walks in the room, you can straighten up, clean the computer, whatever you got to do, move your papers off, shift the papers around quick. It lets us know that you have control over, more control than you want to admit you've got over the situation. Y'all ready for a new year? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it let me know, and God convicted me several years ago. He convicted me. He says, Michael, you have more respect for your family than you have for me. Mm. You have more respect for your friends than you have for me. You have more respect for church members than you have for me. And I had to face the fact that's where I was. I cried for many days and wept over this because of what it made me do. It made me realize this church. 
It made me realize I did not love God the way I thought I loved God. Mm. So when Jesus is watching, he sees it as it is. Mm -hmm. Right? And I thank God that he showed me how I was because I'm not like that now. Y'all follow that? Because he convicted me to the place and let me run and made me stronger. Because let me know the stuff you say you're weak for, you're not weak for, you just want to do it. That's mm -hmm. right. Y'all come on now. I know y'all want to go. This is not the way to start off a new year. But I'm telling you, that if we're going to be right and do right, we got to be faithful over what God called us to do. Yes. I know your works. He says, I'm, look what God says here. This is what I'm excited about, y'all. Unlimited possibilities. God says, I set before you an open door. Y'all be seeing it this morning. God is saying to the church, I know who you are. I know what you're doing. I see everything you do. And because of what you're doing, you've been faithful. I'm going to put a door in front of you. I'm going to set in front of you an open door. What does that mean? Unlimited possibilities. Oh, y'all, give God a praise like that. And say, you mean to tell me in 2023, I've got some unlimited possibilities? Yes. Why do I say unlimited? Because God's opened the door and God can do anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's unlimited possibilities. He says, uh, uh, I've set before you an open door. And guess what? It doesn't matter who doesn't like you. <laughs> it doesn't matter what they say about you. It doesn't matter about the naysayers because he's trying to open the door and nobody can shut it. Y'all with me in the book? Amen. I'm in the book, ain't I? Yep. Verse 8. I got a door for you. I'm opening and I, it doesn't matter because God is saying this today. I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of him. Y'all better give God yeah, a praise. Amen. I'm going to let those who hate on you see my work through you and acknowledge that this was my work. Amen. 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 Don't worry about your haters. He says, no man can shut. Nobody can block. Y'all, we used to say it years. We used to sing it all. Over and over again, what God has for me, it is for me. When God has something for you, when God puts a door in front of you, can't nobody trip you, take it from you, steal it from you. Nobody's stronger than the God that opened that door for you. Say, I've got some unlimited. Touch yourself. I've got, I've some, got. Unlimited some unlimited possibilities. 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 Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. But I want us to look at this now because when, when God opens a door, we're not talking about doors for it may include your finance it may include a new job it may include a new car it may include some advancement on your job it may include all these things and that's fine but that's just side stuff that's the stuff side that's just uh that's the that's the uh what we call them uh the leftovers the leavings of the blessing red hand <laughs> that that's just the stuff on the side that's the salad. That's the that's the hors d'oeuvres. That's not the main meal. The main meal as children of God, we got to have our mind renewed. We want God to open up unlimited possibilities for ministry. Oh, y'all, come on now. Amen. Not for more money and houses and land. No, for ministry. Yes. How can I use what God, the door that God's opened, how can I now, first of all, I got to go in. No, let me step back. You got to see the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to be able to see the door. He says to them, he says here in verse 8, I'm, I'm, I'm still in the text. He says, I know your works. He says, see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, Y'all better give God some praise right there. Y'all see that? I didn't make it up there. He says what? See. <coughs> you got to be able to see that there's an open door in front of you. Amen. Amen. And when you see there's an open door, you cannot, we cannot stand back at the open door and sit with the naysayers. Somebody already told me, oh, it ain't coming out. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, we got this new opportunity to, to, to minister a good price, a good location, a nice building, a nice facility. And then somebody said, oh, they're not going to come out. Let's prove them wrong. Amen. 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 Let's fill the place for the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because God has opened up a door of opportunity. And if we stand back, we can stand back and doubt God. Or we can step forward and say, God, we're going to trust you with this. Yeah. Amen. How many want to trust God with this? Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 We've been in the boat too long. We got to step out because unlimited possibilities. 
I'm asking God for some. Y'all come on with me today. Say divine connections. Divine connections. I want God to, to bring some people in our lives that mean business for God. Amen. So we can come together and do the work of God. Yes. Saving souls. Amen. Amen. Reaching out communities. Making a difference in people's lives. Yes. God has given you something. God has put a door in front of you. So you got to see the door. And you cannot. No, I'm, just, I'm just. These points are coming to me as go. You got to see the door right. But you got to be willing to go through the door. Amen. Y'all come yes. on now. Give me some. Amen. Give God amen. some grace. Amen. 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 Give me some amen. amen. So let me hear some amen. encouragement. Amen. That I, feel, I feel my help coming, yes, as they say. Amen. Yes. I feel the spirit yes. work with me. Yes. Yes. With this yes. in a, a way I never thought before. Okay. He says you got to go in that door. What's hindering us from going in the door is we're afraid we're going to fail. Amen. Oh, y'all can give God some grace. Amen. We're afraid. Yeah. We're afraid that we're going to get out there and we're going to look foolish. Mm. We're afraid we're going to get out there and things won't come together. Mm. But I'm listening. I'm hearing the bones connecting. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's, yeah. Some, there's some yeah. dry bones out yeah. there who yeah. say we can't live. This can't be done. But oh, oh, hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Them Amen. bones, them bones, them dry bones. Hear yes. the word of the Lord. Let the bones start clicking together because God got something to do. Yes. God's about to raise an army out of the ashes. Y'all better give God some yes, praise. Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, he's raising the army out of the ashes. He says, you got to see. I have set before you. I mean, God says, I'm, you got to see it. God says, I'm putting it right in your face. So I'm, I'm letting you know right now. That you got to be able to see what God's putting in your face. Yeah. God will sometimes just drop stuff in your lap. Mm -hmm. And we begin to think about what can I do with it to uh, benefit myself. Amen. Mm -hmm. But God didn't open that door for you to benefit yourself. Mm -hmm. God opens the door for the benefit of other people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We got to get beyond the, the, the selfish thinking. The stinking thinking. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We got to be on the, the small mindedness. Does this mean to belittle anybody else? When he, this is not about what anybody else is doing. It's what God's called us to do. Yes. Yes. We can make a difference. I said a little bit about it last night during our watch night uh, prayer service. I said, do you look and observe the kind of people Jesus chooses? Yeah. Woo! Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And he took time to take and see when Jesus came to earth, he didn't go to the temple. He didn't go to the synagogue. He went out to where men were fishing, just minding their business, ordinary people. Mm -hmm. And he called them and said, I'm going to make you a fisherman. God is still looking for ordinary people. Mm -hmm. yes, is. God is still searching for those who will serve him in spirit and truth. God is not worried about your level of education. You know what he'll do with you? He'll take the foolish person and confound the wise with it. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen, 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 amen. He give me somebody who has not been educated but know the word of God. you got some power. Yes. But give me somebody who's got education and know the word. you got even more power. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. you got to understand that you can, you can get the message but miss the messenger. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can get the message but miss the one who gave you the message. Mm -hmm. yes. The Pharisees and scribes had the message. Oh, y'all, y'all not for y'all following me this morning? The yeah. scribes of Greek, your Bible, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The, the religious leaders had the message. They had the word. They memorized the word. They knew what Jesus would be born in. They knew what the Bible said would happen to him. But they still went against everything the Bible said they ought to go against. Yeah. The very one they talked about, they persecuted. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be surprised that your foremost persecutors will come from religious circles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised that your foremost naysayers will be those who are in church. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised, amen. The Bible says it here in this text that the, the Lord says to them, I know that they, the, those are the synagogue of Satan. He talks about them going to religious folk, but he called them the synagogue of Satan. You can have a, a building that's called a church, and it might not be God's church at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can have a leader who's got a title, and it might not be God's servant, God's angel at all. Might be somebody else's angel. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can have a prophet. There was a prophet in one of the churches who would lead people wrong. And the Lord said you allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. You can have those who call themselves prophets and priests and all kind of titles. But may not be speaking from God. Read the Old Testament. You find out God talks about people who weren't speaking for him. They were called prophets. But they're speaking out of their own heads. Mm -hmm. Speaking out of their own hearts. And a real prophet would come with a word, they would condemn and throw them in jail. Ask Jeremiah about that. Yeah. Amen. 
Jeremiah, the people of Israel got in trouble and God told them because of your behavior, you're going to be judged. The prophets of that day would say, oh, God's going to protect the city. God's going to do this. And God's going to open this. And God's going to do that. And Jeremiah came by and said, y'all going to be judged. Y'all going to captivity. Mm -hmm. They put him in jail. Why? Because he spoke from God. Yeah. So don't be surprised when you get connected with God, you will be persecuted. But you don't have to worry because God opened the door. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He says to them what I love. I love about this. He says to them, I'm still in that verse. He said, nobody can say. He says, for you have a little strength. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? He depended. You know, there's a, a King Uzziah uh, back in the uh, Chronicles. King Uzziah was building and planting and doing wonderful things for the people of God. And the Bible says he did well until he got strong. Y'all, y'all, mm. come on now. Mm. He did a good job until he got strong. He got strong, you know what he did? He started knocking against God. Mm -hmm. He got strong, he thought he could do what he wanted to do. He got strong, he thought he could do what he wanted to do. And some people are in position now, think they can treat people any kind of way, and mm -hmm. think that's pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Run church like worse, worse than run businesses. Treat people worse than employees. Where employee give you a couple days notice. Employee give you time to improve. They require you. To give you a, a, a paper let you know this is what I, I expect of you and this is what you're doing and I'm going to give you time to get it together or you're not qualified and that is kick you out in one minute. Mm -hmm. No chance to get it together, nothing. And call ourselves, that's not the way the house of God's supposed to be run. Not at all. If you can't find mercy in the house of God, where are you going to find mercy? Mm -hmm. If you can't find love in the house of God, where are you going to find love? What, the world is definitely going to go to hell. You can't find it in church. Where are you going to find it when the Lord said, we are the salt of the earth. Yes. We are the light. God is using the light of the world. We are the city that should not be hidden. And if love can't be found in the house of God, where are people going to go? Mm -hmm. Some place you go, why don't, why don't treat each other better than church numbers do? Mm -hmm. They share their Bible. Their, their, my Bible. Mm -hmm. Their Bible. Amen. That's what they study. <laughs> They're willing to share whatever they got. We meet people on the street. We met people on the street saying, well, I already got one of those. Give it to somebody who needs it. They, they live on the street. We met people like that. Yep. I, don't, I, I just got one of those last week. Give it to somebody who really needs it. They on the street sleeping. That's the kind of, y'all, do we know what kind of spirit we are? Do we recognize the kind of spirit that Jesus has given us? It's the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. A spirit Amen. of love and compassion. A spirit of acceptance. We got to recognize that, yes, yes, we have we have to have some standards. Yes, we have to have some standards. And God loved this church. He loved all his people. But he gave standards. We have to have some standards. Amen. We should not be practicing certain things and still calling us ourselves children of God. Yeah. Amen. We should not be conformed to what the world is doing. So what they legalize stuff because it's legal that means it's holy. Amen. Amen. Because it's legal that means because man stamps his approval on stuff that means God approves of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And because we enjoy our worship experience that means God's enjoying it. Mm. I'm reading through the Old Testament and I declare I see it over and over again. God says you're worshiping me but I'm going to turn my head. Right. <clears throat> I'm not going to accept your sacrifices. Mm. You mean I can come to church and worship and God not accept it? Yes. He says, why? He said, because you're treating people wrong. Mm. You're, you're cheating in the marketplace. You're cheating with your wives. And you come here to my house and, and lift up holy hands. God said, I'll turn my head. Mm. Welcome to 2023. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm just in the word. He says, well, he says, well, you have a little strength. Any good to know you got a little strength? What a little strength means that I, I'm faithful to be dependent on God. How many are you depending on God? Yes. You know, you got to recognize no matter how, how much strength you think you have, it's still a little strength. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you think you're strong, take heed, the Bible says, unless you fall. Paul said, you know, Paul said, Paul said, I glory in my weaknesses. It's in, it's in 2 Corinthians 12. Read it. Read that chapter. Paul said, I glory in my weaknesses. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? We like to boast about our strengths, don't we? I'm strong yeah. in this area. I'm strong in that area. And I'm I'm wise. We like to boast about those. But Paul says, I boast about my weaknesses. Yeah. What kind of craziness is that? Mm. I boast about where I know I'm weak. He said, you know why? He says, because he says, because when I'm weak, I must depend on God. Mm, yes. 
Hey, hallelujah. How many going to be faithful this year are depending on God? Yeah. I say it all the time. A strong Christian is not strong because they're strong. A strong Christian is strong because they're dependent. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what makes me strong. You can fight temptation all you want. You can make all the resolutions you want. But before February comes, you'll be backed up in all those things. Mm -hmm. But you get some Holy Ghost up in your life. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. You get some power. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He gives you power to do what you're supposed to do. Liberation. It's not. Amen. People say, I want to be a Christian because you got all these rules and regulations. You got to understand, baby, you're the one that's bound up. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't make it without a drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't make without a pill. <clears throat> you can't make without a club. You can't make it to. You can't wait to the next party. To me, so so you gotta have some outside to make you happy. Amen. Amen. And pursuing stuff that means no happiness at all. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, that just killed himself. Uh, Twitch. Twitch. He looked happy. Every time you saw him, he looked happy. And Robin Williams made his life in making people laugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, every clown, every entertainer is not happy inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They use their joy to deflect the misery that's inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You find a person that's always cracking jokes, you'll find a person that's broken oftentimes in their heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know because I was one of them. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So you use humor to deflect what's really going on. Yeah. They would laugh at me and I'd be hurt and I'd laugh right along with them. Ha, 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 that's right, that's right. Inside I was broken. Mm. Amen. 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 So it's not in what goes on outside of you that, 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 that makes you free to do what you want to do. Because the very things you think you're free to do, you're bound to them. Yeah. But it's what the Lord does. Yes. He sets you free. We can see stuff and say, I no longer have to do that anymore. Amen. I don't need that in my life anymore. One time I needed that. Amen. I don't need that anymore. Why? Because Christ has set me free. Yes. One time I realized my joy came in other things, but now my joy is wrapped up in him. That gives me freedom. Not from what goes on outside of me, but from what's happening inside of me. You got to get yourself some real joy. Yes. Yes. That's why I'm so passionate about it because I've experienced it myself. myself. You got to get yourself some real joy. In 2023, we want to have unlimited possibilities. We got to understand we want to be this kind of church that had unlimited possibilities. We've got to understand this. We've got to look. We got to recognize our strength has so we have to be in a position where we depend on God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Then he says, uh, you have kept my word. Not gonna just leave that and go sit down, y'all, behind this. Keeping the word doesn't mean uh holding your Bible. Keeping the word doesn't mean uh it doesn't mean uh that I have a Bible on my coffee table. Keeping the word doesn't mean that I, I go to Bible study uh, on uh, the night that's required. Keeping the word doesn't mean I just read my Bible every day. Keeping the word means I'm faithful to that word I'm reading. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. That means that when I go to the word of God, I'm going not to learn facts. I'm going to learn how to live. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna give God some prayer. I'm not going, I'm not going to fill my head. I'm going to have my heart convicted and changed. Yes. yes. I, I, I'm not going so I can impress somebody with what I know and how well I can say it. You know, I can I can uh, uh, I can chew it up and I can spit it out and I can make people shout and then leave out still broken. Mm -hmm. Shouting and broken. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Dancing and broken. Hallelujah. Going home but still broken. Why? Because it's not just shot that's going to get you over. It's the word of God that's going to get you over. Yeah, you got to right. have the word of God down in your heart. I talked to you a few weeks ago about depression. How you going to overcome? I cannot promise you will never be depressed again. I cannot promise you depression won't come your way. But I can tell you this. You put the right thing inside of you, you have something to do battle with. Yeah. Amen. 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 You put the right thing inside of you, you will have something. I learned a long time ago, y'all. I'm going to share this with you. I'm about to take my seat in a few minutes. I learned a long time ago, and I thank God for my teaching. I came up in a Bible study and taught me how to love God's Word. Amen. Taught me that God's Word was a priority. We, I didn't understand a lot, but taught me, still don't, taught me how to, to love God's Word. That's why I teach it and preach it. I'm going line by line. That's why I teach and preach it the way I do. I believe there's more power in any kind of document I can write out in the Amen. Word of God. I believe the Word of God has the power to break up, to break up the cause of hearts. Why? Because God said, I'm going to send my word out. It won't return to me void. God said, my word is alive. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharp. 
The word of God will save people. Man don't save people. It's the God, the Holy Spirit yeah. takes the word of God and applies it to the heart and brings yes. conviction and change. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. All I do, I'm just a, I'm just a, a, a farmer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. I just plant. I just plant. And water. Right. But God is the one that he's, he's a life giver. He's yes. the one that gives an increase. Yes. Amen. And I trust God for increase. Mm -hmm. Call out increase right now. Amen. Trust increase. God for increase. Yes, yes. That's a door that's open before us. We want souls to be saved and changed and transformed by the word of God. He says, they've kept my word. They prioritize the word. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean just some, some a superficial dedication. It means I'm getting in and find out how is God required me to live. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's time not to, just to come to church. It, it, it's time not just for us to gather together. It's time not for us just to sing together. It's time for us to be the church. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Be the church. Be the temple. You are the temple. You are the holy place. You are the place where God dwells. You are the holy of holies. You and I are the temple of living God. Amen. Will you take the temple and just do anything with it? No. If you recognize that's a holy place, why are you going to unholy places with taking a holy place? Doing unholy things with it. The realization of the word of God is what brings about transformation. He says, you kept my word. How many, God, how many word keeps I got up there? Love the word of God. You know, I can tell, you know, an easy way to tell whether someone loves the word of God, do you study it? Mm. Do you read it more than this is Sunday morning? Do you only come to it when you have a need? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Is the last thing you want to do is read your Bible? Mm. The first thing you want to do is look at TV? Mm. Is the last thing you want to do is read your Bible? The first thing you do is eat a meal? How important is God's work? Does it drive you to get up early and do reading? Does it drive you to stay up late and do some reading? Not because you're trying to impress anybody. Nobody sees what you're doing in secret. But you're doing it because you need God. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to know you got a little strength. Yes. Hallelujah. And don't wait until the big temptation comes to realize you got a little strength. Start getting strong now. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus told the disciples, watch and pray so you won't enter into temptation. Amen. Amen. You not only gotta, you not only gotta get in the word. You gotta watch. You gotta pray. You gotta watch. You know why? Because the devil's watching you. You need to start watching him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. Amen. You gotta watch the inroads in your own life, the weaknesses in our own lives, those things that drive us crazy in our own life. Watch that area and say, God, I need you to cover that area. Right, that area is bad. That heart, that thought in my life is bad. That attitude is bad. So I'm watching and I'm praying. I'm watching others and watching me. I'm watching. You gotta watch and pray. Amen. Amen. So why? So you won't enter into temptation. Temptation is always going to be there, but you don't have to always enter into it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 And the good news, you don't have to enter into it because the Lord will give you the strength to walk around stuff, to walk over stuff, to recognize what you thought you needed, you really didn't need, but you needed him. He said, they have not denied my name. How many love the name of the Lord? Yes. Denying Amen. his name. Denying like Peter denied him and so many people act like you. Deny him and say no to him. We sing a song years ago says, never say no to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your answer ought to always be yes. yes. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When you, so when God opens up, the reason he says this in this verse, I'm going to read this verse again and go to my seat real soon. He said, I know your words. Verse 8. I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. This word for here, this, this preposition for means the reason why I opened the door. Y'all follow the reason why I open the door is because you're faithful in dependence, you're faithful to my word, and you're faithful to Christ. Amen. 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 Give God praise Amen. for all the things he's done. Yes. Yeah. If you want to be a person that experiences like I do, unlimited possibilities. If you don't want to go there, just move out the way. Amen. Amen. Tell us, move out the way. Tell us I'm going there. Amen. Going there. Glory is my goal. Yes. Yes. Not my glory, but the glory of God. Glory. Yes, yes. I'm set. Hallelujah. Yes. On this race. And I wish you would join me today. Be set on this race. And with all I have left in me, I'm set for the glory. Yes. How many were set for the glory? Yes. I'm yes. Set, set for the glory. glory. Set for yes. his glory. Set to do what he wants me to do. Set to live the life he wants me to live. So 2023 is a year of unlimited possibilities. 
Yeah. What you going to do when God presents an open door to you? Mm. You got to see that door. You got to be willing to enter that door. Yes. And not let anything hinder you from going through that door. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The door is open. Church of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. yes. The door is open. When we show brotherly kindness, it demonstrates that we are God's child. Yes. Amen. 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 It demonstrates it. So God bless your family. Mike's going to come. Uh, but give us our closing prayer. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing, all that you've done for this ministry, all that you're going to, going to do, Lord. Thank you for opening new doors for this ministry, opening new doors for us individually. Lord, please continue to keep your hand on this ministry. Keep your hand on, us, on the, all the ministers, all the, all the people that come to visit every week, all the people that are just visiting from once every, every once in a while. Lord, we want to say thank you. Because we can't say thank you enough. We have nothing we can do to make up for what you've done for us. There's no way we can repay you other than accepting your word. Yes. Lord, accepting you as our Lord and our Savior. Yes. As we make you our Lord, we follow your directions. We, we follow your commandments. We, we accept you as our Savior. We, we know we're, we're saved from sin. We're no longer cursed. We're no longer under the curse of the world to fall for all the traps of the world. You give us the keys, the strength, the power to make it through all. Lord, we can't say thank you enough. Thank you for touching me directly, Lord. I, 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 this year has been a trying year, but you brought me through every step of the way. Coming, coming off of sickness, and I'm, I'm able to speak to you right now, Lord. Forgive people. Allow this ministry to draw more people unto you, Lord. That's our only that's our only purpose for this ministry is to draw more people unto you. Nobody's here trying to get rich. We're definitely not getting rich off of ministry. We give more than we take in. But Lord, we do it on for you. It's all, all for you, Lord. Yes. Yes, we're building up treasures, but not treasures on this side. We're bringing up treasures in heaven. Yes. The only place worth keeping our treasures. Lord, you say you never leave us nor forsake us. And you've shown us every step of the way. Through my life personally, I've been so through so many different trials. I know that I can always lean on you. I knew I had to be in my darkest place so I can appreciate your light, Lord. I had to get to my weakest so I can bend on your strength, not on my own strength. I am weak compared to you, Lord. I have nothing without you, Lord. Mm. Lord, we can't walk, we can't talk, we can't hear, we can't see without you, your graces. These are just some of the gifts that you give us that we take for granted, Lord. Lord, please continue to touch this ministry. Touch every heart under this ministry. Help us to build hearts, mend some hearts back together. There's tons of broken hearts, tons of broken minds, but you're the only healer. You're the potter. You have the power to break that pot and make something new. Make us into new creations, Lord. Lord, we want to open up the house to you. Everybody understand my voice. If you don't know God for yourself, make a comment. Ask us directly. How can we help you get closer to Christ? We will answer you. We want to be an open house because this is the house of God. Yeah. Lord, the body is the temple. As soon as we accept you as our Lord and our Savior, you, you come to our hearts. And the church is not a building. It's in our hearts. As soon as we accept you as our Lord and our Savior, you come to us directly. So everywhere we walk, you walk with us. Help us to bring people under your cloth, under, under your shadow, <coughs> under, un, under your wing. Lord, help us. Lord, all we want to do is help build your kingdom. Help us, Lord. Anybody that has any questions, feel free to comment us. Call us. We have our information. We're always available. We have our email. Any way you want to reach us, reach us directly. We will come, we will comment back. We will talk to you. Lord, let them know that they can they can get closer to you 
and we'll help them, guide them to you. We're just ushers. We want to usher them to you, closer to you, build your relationship. Lord, we know that you, we put it all in your hands. You won't, we're going to give it to you because only in your hands will this ministry grow. Yes. And we're going to go everywhere you want us to go. If you're not going, we're not going. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God bless you. Time getting out in a good time. This is our new normal. So you have the whole day to do whatever the Lord leads you to do. Amen. 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 Um, the, the address for the church uh, slash theater <laughs> is uh, on our page. You can look down on the page. Mike has already posted it on the page. And uh, again, uh, get your friends and neighbors and say, we only going to be there an hour. Come on, go with That's me. It. Amen. We'll be there long. Those of you who want to join us in Sunday school, feel free to join us there. Um, um, we start at 845, so we'll be there sometime before that time, 830 or so. We'll be around there just so we can get set up for Sunday school. We're in need of whatever you can do for us. I mean, because we have, we, we need everything. Ushers, we need teachers, we need kids, we need adults, we need everything. Yeah. And God will send that singers. I mean, we got <laughs> one choir member so far, so we need musicians, we need everything. But God's going to provide as He sees to open the door for us, and He's going to continue to open the doors of opportunity for us to get the ministry uh, the way He wants it to be, and we give Him glory for that. Amen. Amen. I pray today that something's been said to lift your heart, encourage you, and even convict you. Amen. Yes. Because if you leave out shouting every week, it means you're not growing. Amen. If you're comfortable, it means you're not growing. Amen. 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 You're always comfortable, always, you know, everything's cool. It means you're not growing. But when you're uncomfortable, you got to be, I'm trying my, by the grace of God, somebody said this and I want to get the kind of idea. I want um, the discomfort to be a way of life because I want to always be growing and doing things I have not done before. Amen. Amen. Stretching out by faith. Amen. Uncomfortable, but trusting God. Amen. Yes. So we thank God for this is new territory for us as a ministry. We pray you join us, bring your family, friends, whoever want to come along, and just go ahead and just fill this theater up for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And let's do Amen. what we got to do and be gone for our day. Get our word from God, a song and a, and a word, be gone. Amen. Amen. So thank God for each one of you. We love you. King of Praise Ministry loves you. As you continue to um, stand by us with your prayers, and we prepare also for our outreach ministry. We're preparing, we're gathering things now for that and assessing what we need, what we need to do. Uh, so we um, are asking that you pray that God will guide us uh, as we seek to uh, do work for him. Amen. Amen. We need your prayers. We solicit your prayers. God bless you, family. We love you. Happy New Year to you. And may the richest blessings of God be upon your house this year as you walk in unlimited, unlimited opportunities. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.